Okay, so with that, I'm Ken Delata. For those who don't know me, I'm the county conservationist for the O'Connell County Land and Water Conservation Department. And I guess a little background uh, before I get into anything is for people that are not familiar with Zoom, um, this kind of it's kind of uh, changed with uh, when COVID hit. We've been doing this for a while. Um, but if you look on your screen, you can see all the participants and stuff. Um, on the bottom left corner should be, this is not for phones. This is just on computers. There's a microphone. You click on that, it'll mute. We ask that people stay muted um, uh, during, during the presentation, unless you have questions and stuff. But the way to address that, is um, over a ways, there's a question and answer. You see about four over. You can click on that and you can type a question in there and we will see that and we will answer all questions tonight. Maybe not the right answer, but um, we will get to them all, at all the questions. Uh, next, it has a chat button. You can go in there and just chat, almost like texting. Um, and then for people, if you have a weaker Wi-Fi band um, uh, video, they say if you turn that off, that helps your uh, not using so much of your band when uh, Go, watching the presentation. So but anyways, with that, um, like I said, my name is Kendall Otter, County Conservationist. Uh, we started this project in 2016. I'm going to share my screen here. Oh, um, here's kind of a map. We did the, all, all these that are colored are lakes that are in this study. Um, they've been done. They're currently in it. Um, you can see, yeah, 2016, we started. We're down to about eight, 10 lakes left. Uh, you guys waited till the end because you already, you guys already had a uh, lake management plan and stuff where a lot of these lakes did not have them or when they were expiring. So the way this, uh, I guess, all started was O'Connell County Land Conservation Department has a land and water resource management plan that we have to do every 10 years, which is coming up next year. But the last time we did it would have been about 2015. We were going through it and we get a citizens advisory committee. I think we had like 12 or 14 people on there. And we had uh, a few people from up north, um, Trout Unlimited, uh, someone from the Lake Association. But that's about it. The rest is was mainly focused around agriculture, which Wakano County and our office has been for quite a long time. Um, so as we were going through this plan, we were sitting there talking about the water quality of our lakes. And we found out we really did not know much about our lakes. Some of the rivers we knew about that we were doing the work on, but we really didn't know about our lakes. So that led us down the road to work with um, UW Stevens Point, which Ryan will talk tonight, um, and UW Extension. Uh, we get grants through the DNR to do a lot of this work. We provide our in-kind work uh, match, Dale and I, and... Um, Brenda Nordine, which I'm sure a lot of you know, she takes and uh, does a lot of work on her part through the DNR. So um, since 2016, we've we've uh, come a long ways. Uh, 68 lakes, I believe, is what we're going to have total. We, they have to have public access on them to qualify So for the DNR grants. So that's obviously the one main criteria that went through this. So, um, And obviously through the time, we refined how we've, how we've gone about it. So you guys are going to be a little different because you've already had a lake management plan. Still going to have the same stuff done, but you don't have to start from the beginning and explaining what the lake management plan is, I guess, basically. I mean, maybe a little bit on it. Um, I'm going to switch screens now because the other thing I want to mention to you, hopefully you can see our county website screen. Um, all this data is going to be housed on our website. So if you go. I'm just going to go through it quickly to show you where it's at uh hey ken i'm through... still ken sorry i'm still seeing your uh lake map okay i'm gonna stop sharing and then switch it over okay let me go here one more time how's that there you go okay so this is the o'connell county website um if you go up here under departments just scroll down. You can click on it to go down, or you can scroll down land and water conservation. And once you get here, it's the very first one on the top left here. Hopefully you can see my mouse and little finger there going, but county waterways and aquatic invasive species. You can click on that. Feel free to look at anywhere on our website that you want. 
Um, this is where all the lake stuff and water stuff is. Um, so on this page here, you got aquatic invasive species if you want to learn about them. Countywide lake study, that's what this is. So all your information is going to be under here. I am going to mention shoreline restoration. We work with that. If you want us to come out there and evaluate your property and see what can be done to help uh, the lake or you have erosion, whatever, um, we come out and do that for free of charge. Uh, funding sources. We have cost sharing for shoreline restoration. We have cost sharing um, for if you've got a driveway that's eroding out and going into the lake. Uh, we've got different different uh, sources of funding. We also see and you guys are, I believe you're a lake district or not your big association, but um, uh, we do have our Ocano County Lakes and Waterways uh, organizations we got in there. And one of the fundings we did is only them organizations or a sportsman club. Uh, we've got funding for the, as a group that you can apply for, not individuals. So um, then the bottom is a topographic lake maps. And eventually through this study, you'll get a new topographic map of your lake. So um, I'm going to go into the countywide lake study. And here basically have uh, the operation strategy and plan for surface water management and protection. This is what started this whole whole thing um, with the study that it's our county plan on how we're doing this, I guess, this project. Uh, Ocano County All Lake Summary, pretty interesting. Once you get your data collection and stuff, yours, yours will be put into this um, and you're compared side by side with all the other lakes. You want to go in there and browse that, you can see what the other lakes are and um, how it looks. Uh, kind of county lakes and project date. I'm going to skip that for a second. Uh, we'll come back to that last. But then the bottom one is the individual county lake summary report surveys and in virtual meetings. So if you look in here, there's all the lakes that have been done so far. And you can see on the top is the kind of county all lake summaries in there, the uh, project update on the strategy plan. But then you go down and you can see the first one's Anderson Lake Map. Anderson summary, Anderson final lake management plan. So you won't have anything on here until uh, till we get data, which is, it'll be two years, unfortunately. And Ryan can go more into that on how it's going to work. Uh, one thing, I don't know if we have it on here yet, is uh, on the left-hand side here, you can see the lake surveys. And we will have a survey on there that we ask everyone to Go in and take. It's not very long. It's asking about your lake, your interest in it. You don't have to live on the lake. It can be neighbors that come up and use the lake. And it's just for us to gain uh, a feeling of what what the majority of the people's interests are with the lake, good, bad, indifferent. If you have four people in your household, everyone can take it. It don't matter. Um, but we will have that on there uh, shortly. And just go in there, click it, take it, submit it, and it's done. And right below that, the other thing I wanted to point out is the Lake Study Virtual Meeting Recordings. This is, um, if your neighbors couldn't make it, friends, family, whatever, um, within about a week or so it takes us, but we will put, uh, I can click on it, but we'll be on here, it'll be under Reservoir Pond, whatever, um, as a Meet Your Scientist virtual meeting. So they can come on here and watch this whole this whole presentation that, that's being recorded. So, um, so with that, I am going to back up and I'm going to go into this Ocano County Lakes project update and I'm going to let Dale Moore from UW Extension explain what this is and give his spiel. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Again, I'm Dale Moore. I'm the county agent. Uh, I'm the agent for community development within Ocano County. And Ken mentioned about 2016, uh, we did bring a, a, a group of stakeholders together to try to figure out what would be some of the key efforts that the county resources could uh, bring to bear uh, for people uh, of their concerns. And pretty much we were hearing that there was a lot around our, our surface waters and lakes in particular because we weren't sure if any of our activities were having any impacts because we didn't have a baseline of information for a lake. So we thought that if we could take the two of us here at the county, we are uh, we are the uh, county employees, everybody else tonight that we'll be introducing you to um, are, are from either Stevens Point, uh, the DNR, uh, uh, Lake Association, that sort of thing. 
uh, they're, they're more, uh, let's say, long-term, temporary. They're around. They're helping us, uh, doing a lot of Herculean efforts here, lifting up, uh, getting a lot of data. Uh, but uh, in the long run, it, it'll be Ken's office and my office that will be dealing with uh, uh, you folks in your lakes down the way. So what we really wanted was a reference where we could have 60 to 68 lakes out of the 300 that we have in O'Connell County. They have public access. We thought those would be the most in danger of human activities. So let's get a baseline for those. Well, you can't just snap your fingers and have all that data appear within a year or even two years. So we've been going from 2016 to today, and we have about just over the 40 lakes done so far. And this document that we put together was our main attempt to try to keep folks like you that are right at the beginning of the process and those that are in the middle of the process and those that are at the end of the process and those that are just curious about the entire process informed. So that's what this document does. That's a lot that has to be sandwiched into a document like this. So if you wanted to go to the uh, website that Ken first showed you, uh, you would be able to find the O'Connell County Lakes Project update. And you always look in the right-hand corner and you'll see the latest time that this was updated is this past month. So we changed the color and we put the date there so that you know that this is the uh, the most current uh, document. So the first paragraph really tells you and your neighbors, if you would like to share this with, what the project is all about. We understand that you had a lake management plan done before. But again, what the county is doing to make sure that you don't have to pay for this, this is this is on our dime using uh, DNR grants as well as in kind from uh, all, all the scientists that are uh, putting their time and effort into it, is that we wanted to have documents of these 60 to 68 lakes all in the same format. We also wanted to have a compendium of the lakes so that as we go through issues, whether it's shoreline development or uh, water uh, data, that we would know where the hotspots are. So right away we could turn to a page Ryan will get into greater detail, but on our side is we don't have to go through all the plans to try to figure out where we could best get access and, and put our resources and money to. So the idea is we needed to have a document like that. Thus, we want all the docu documents to be in the same format and conducted in the same exact way. So we're not your typical lake management plan uh, that you've had in the past. We're a little bit unique in what we're doing, uh, but we hope that uh, because you're saving dollars on it and it's going to impact your water uh, and, the, and the lake and the shoreline uh, the way you envision it to be, that this will be a document worth uh, you wanting to have and worth our effort uh, to, together. So with that, uh, we, we would like to um, not only house all the information on the website, uh, that Ken showed, but we want this document to be printable. All right. But if you open it up online, you can see if I hover over the website right here, if I were to click that, it would immediately go to that last site that Ken showed you. So you wouldn't have to go through the entire step-by-step uh, -step process. Um, in gray here, I mentioned that your neighbors and you were encouraging you to get your voices heard. Please answer the survey. Uh, take that. In addition, uh, if you go just to the bottom again, the website appears with the hand. You just click and it'll take you to that section where you can find the survey. So if a neighbor or yourselves are sitting uh, tomorrow or the next week trying to figure out what this entire process was about again, before you call us, you might just want to read through the document and say, oh, hey, there's a goal that is part of this entire uh, process. Um whether it's looking at uh, the near shore and the shoreline habitat. So we, we boldly list our, our, our goal up front. We talk about the activity, what it is that uh, those on the lake are going to do. In yellow are all the lakes that now have data finished. We thought that it's important because a lot of folks like to be on a lake, but they, uh, they also enjoy other lakes. So let them know that uh, Christie Lake or or White Lake or White uh, Potato, they're done already. So if you're looking for a scientific understanding of near shore and shoreline data, well, you know that those lakes are already done in the process. Lakes that are listed underneath there, these were the dates that were tentative at the time uh, for Sunrise, Crooked, Gilkey, Bass, Yankee, and Boundary. 
And then, of course, Horn, Little Horn, Explosion, and then Reservoir Pond, Townsend, Florida, and McCaslin, obviously the new cohort that you're all a part of. We don't have the specific dates. We know it's going to be June 5th to the 20th the, that the surveys are going to be uh, conducted. Um, when we do this, we would like you to know that at least you would be able to look at that and say, you know what, sometime in June, I'm around on my lake. Maybe I would like to go out on a pontoon or, or in a boat and uh, maybe give about three hours of my time. Uh, I need to call uh, one of the uh, scientists, whether it's Brenda uh, and her staff from the DNR. They're always glad to have you come out. Ryan from uh, Stevens Point uh, is always glad to have uh, you guys come out. So look at that and know that those are basically a tentative timeline, but they're happy to have you call and get the, the specifics from the date and the boat landing and which lake they're going to be on. So we tried to do that with each goal. So when we're done with that, we talk about the deliverable as well. You know, what, what does that mean for goal one? What's actually going to be in our hands? We then go over, uh, for example, uh, goal number two, looking at the uh, aquatic plants and the aquatic invasive species that would be out there. Again, we talk about the activity that's listed, all the lakes that are done. Then also uh, the tentative dates for each of the lakes that are currently being studied uh, that haven't been finished yet. So in this section, uh, you're going to look at uh, how deep the lake is. Ryan will talk about, you know, the, the coolness of a bathymetric map. Uh, those things are going to be uh, something um, that will, will appear as well uh, that won't be, let's say for you, it won't be until spring of 2026. So even though you're going to have a lot of plant data taken, you're going to have water samples taken uh, quite quickly, you won't have something major like the bathymetric map done. And that, therefore, if you look at it, you'll see that, oh, a lot of the uh, information is going to start right away, June 5th through the 20th uh, for us right here. Then all of a sudden, Dale is showing you that you're not going to get the bathymetric map until spring of 2026. So uh, some things take a while to generate. Uh, but anyway, we're, we want you to know that at least we're giving you a timeline uh, uh, for you to have, have some expectations. When we go uh, goal three, again, we're, we're looking at the water quality and its relationship to land use. They're going to be looking at uh, taking water samples. And again, it's going to be the same format, talking about who's going to be out there, uh, how many times out of the year. Uh, Ken and I, even though we don't go out on a nice sunny day and do the water sampling uh, with the scientists, we are the ones that will be going out in the wintertime. We wait for the uh, latest part of winter. We go out. And uh, let's just say for Yankee and Crooked, as you're looking at that, and Bass and Gilkey, we, we went out in, in March of, of this year to uh, get the water sampling at that time. So anyway, uh, that follows the, uh, the process through this document, and you'll start to see wh which all lakes were done. Obviously, we don't have the uh, dates uh, determined for your lakes yet, uh, but as we scroll through here, you could see uh, the different activities and the deliverables. So again, we have another goal listed, the capacity of groups and lakefront property. Uh, we talk about meetings and that sort of leads us what, where we're at today. We as a group decided that um, because we can't do all 60 some odd lakes in, in one year or two years, we can only do six lakes at a time, maybe nine lakes, but it's gotta be over a two year process. Well, once we start the six lakes, the next year we're starting another six lakes. Then the following year, we're ending those initial six lakes. And then we're also in the second year of the other six lakes. So then we start getting all mixed up. And we didn't want to show up at a lake association meeting um, and say, oh, congratulations, here's all your data. Uh, we wanted to give you a heads up to say, if you would like to participate, if you would like to fill out those surveys, if you'd like to get involved um, and ask questions of us early on, why not get your involvement early on uh, over the two-year process? So that's where we sent out this postcard. Um, have all you great people on tonight. Um, we had over 50 some people uh, sign up. Uh, but the idea is it's called Meet Your Scientists so that you, you're at least familiar with our faces. You'll be getting some phone numbers tonight. Uh, emails, that sort of thing, uh, to contact us. So we thought that would be the best route to go is let everybody know what's going on well in advance. 
So in this thing, we've got a uh, horn, a little horn and explosion that here March 19th is showing up. We got Townsend Flowage and McCaslin Brook will be April 2nd. This all falls under the Meet Your Scientist public meeting, the first one that we've got. And we're going to be in the winter of 2026 is the next time we're going to have so a formal presentation talking about all the data that was collected. And then we're going to be talking about your planning. So then the uh, summary report will follow that. That'll be in the fall of or summer of 2027 to the fall of 2027 is when the document actually will get published um, and adopted by you and the local municipalities. So with that, uh, the document then has goal number five, uh, looking at the social setting. Ken touched on that. We really wanted to know what the county was thinking about our lakes. What about the people that are on the lake? What about people who use the lake that aren't on the lake? What about farmers who use surface water, have issues with uh, running uh, surf or um, uh, uh, drainage, that sort of thing to the waters? So a countywide survey was completed with over 400 respondents on January 18, 2018. We were able to present that information to the county board and the county board decided to give $235,000, not to this project, but to enhance uh, this project with a bunch of grants that we can give out to the lakes uh, throughout the years. So that survey was an eye opener for a lot of folks. If you wanna see that survey and the, and the data, you go right back to that web page uh, that we uh, showed you early on, and you can open up that survey and go through all the 400 respondents and what they were uh, looking at. We also have, uh, uh, let's see here, uh, uh, presentations uh, that we've done. And then of course, we have an operational strategy plan. Right off the bat, we were trying to figure out, well, this can't just be the land conservation department as well as extension departments uh, uh, focus here at the county. We really need to involve uh, park and recreation, zoning and zoning enforcement, sheriff's office, uh, even the health and human services department. A lot of these agencies impact our surface water and groundwater uh, to some degree. Highway department puts down a lot of salt, a lot of brine. Uh, what can they do to minimize that sort of thing? Well, we came up with a lot of concerns based off that survey that was done for the county. And we ended up with an operational strategy plan was unanimously adopted by the county board of Ocano on January of 2018. It goes in there and it has 16 distinct goals that uh, we are to uh, 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 obtain and uh, each of the departments would then work towards. So again, this lake project, uh, luckily you get a lake management plan out of this, a comprehensive study of your lake, but just know that that's one little piece that's actually enhancing the entire understanding of our lakes as a whole. So with that, I know I went through a lot on this uh, document. It also has my name here with my contact and Ken. We will have a slide. We'll also talk about uh, the other scientists that are working on this site. So thank you for letting me take up about 15 minutes of your time. And I, I will turn it over to Ryan then. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Dale. Um... Well, uh, as as Dale said, I don't have I don't have a whole lot uh, more to add to that, folks, other than to introduce myself and um, kind of give you the the structure of the project. Um, again, this is this is just uh, kicking off for you guys, and so um, we don't have a we don't have a bunch of uh, in information summarized about uh, those lakes to, to present to you tonight, but just to explain. Uh, that this project is going to be going on how you can get involved things like that. Um, I will, I'm going to go back to this here. I'm going to sh share this again at the end, but I just wanted to um, uh, point out, Ken has spoken, you met Dale. Uh, my name is Ryan Haney. I work for the Center for Watershed Science and Education at UW-Stevens Point. And so we've been, we've been um, facilitating this project with the county, obtaining the grants and um, uh, completing the reports. Uh, Brenda Nordeen um, is the lake biologist for the DNR uh, for your area. Uh, she's very involved in this project, uh, does a lot of the field work, her and her crew. Um, she's not, I don't think she was able to make it tonight, but a colleague of hers, Claire Hetzel, is on here tonight. Um, Steve Heimerman is uh, always involved. Uh, Oklahoma, which I'm 
guessing uh, your group is probably already a part of. Um, they've been uh, very helpful in this. And then Derek Thorne is also on tonight. He is um, the AIS coordinator for uh, Lumberjack RC&D up in that area. And so um, again, big part of this, this introduction tonight is to uh, for you to meet the folks involved, um, see their contact information um, so that you can figure out what's going on along the way um, and contribute as 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 um, something may come up for you. Um, just to revisit here, I, I showed this at the beginning, uh, but the 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 mission of this project, as as we've been told now, is is to create this baseline of information for all the lakes in the county. Um, when when it comes to your lakes, uh, some of the bigger lakes uh, like you guys have been um, doing things, planning, getting. Um, getting grants uh, and, and doing things for a few years. So none of this project is meant to uh, uh, over, over replace or, um, or be redundant in any of your work. It's meant to augment that in whatever way we can. So um, your aquatic plant management plan, your arrangement with um, your consultant and um, I know the uh, herbicide applications, things like that, that will, you, you guys will continue to do that as, as normal. Um, this is kind of uh, just uh, this lake management plan is to be some structure around that. And so aquatic plants and, and invasive species really become just a chapter in a more comprehensive look at your lake. So um, again, the county was interested in just ranking lakes with, with certain issues uh, so that they could prioritize their resources and um, it gets uh, more and more competitive. We have 10,000, more than 10,000 lakes, 15,000 lakes or so, I believe, in, in uh, Wisconsin. And um, the competition for those grants is getting uh, increasingly tougher. And so these lake management plans um, really demonstrate in those applications that um, you have a group that is uh, not only uh, uh, monitoring uh, change and, and monitoring what's going on on their lake, but that they are um, implementing um, those ideas uh, successfully. And that's that's where they want to get the most bang for their buck. Um, just to show you real quick, a, a lake management plan um, has many different uh, facets to it. Uh, historically, most lake management plans, and I'm, I'm guessing yours, are really focused on uh, weed management, invasive species management, things like that. That's re really, um, for most lakes, that's how they get involved in this process um, is when they need to address something. Um, it's it's important it, it's important again just to be competitive for these grants that uh, it's demonstrated that you guys have a comprehensive understanding of your lake so that includes uh, you know several other things here in addition to those uh, uh, plants you know so we've got physical data baseline chemistry um, you guys uh, also have been um, monitoring for a while I think I saw uh, water clarity measurements back to about 2003. Um, uh, water quality uh, lab measurements back to about 2006. So you guys are already working with about 20 years of data. That's going to really, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to um, uh, evaluate that and, and look at that, but uh, part of this lake management plan will start to tease out some trends if we can see trends in, in phosphorus concentrations or algae or, or things like that, obviously with the plants as well. Um, so that's really the, the components of lake management plan. So we're not going to duplicate or replace anything you guys are already doing. Um, we're really just going to be filling uh, data gaps uh, to create this comprehensive document. Um, so again, uh, Dale, Dale talked to this. I just, here's a kind of an outline form. Uh, we do a, a two-year lake study. Again, for most of the lakes in Oconto, this, uh, that two-year study is all the information they have. They had no previous data ever done on them. For yours, this will just be augmenting what we already have. Um, if you have uh, citizen lake monitors or um, again, consultants or things like that doing things, they will continue to do um, what they do. And um, we will mine all of that information and uh, um, um, put it all together uh, in the in the report at the end. Um, so we'll also be so in addition to what you're doing, we'll be augmenting uh, some studies um, here over the next couple of years, including the habitat survey, the aquatic plant survey, um, watershed land use, phosphorus modeling, all that all that sort of stuff. So we do a two year study. It'll start um, in May, June, I think is when 
is when it starts for you guys. Uh, we'll continue through this summer, uh, winter, and through next summer. And then, um, so 24, 25. And then right about this time um, in winter of 25, 26, so, you know, uh, maybe even early spring of, of 26, um, we will gather again. Uh, perhaps we'll be doing Zoom. Perhaps we'll be in person. Um, we'll see. But um, we'll gather again, and we will basically present the results of, of the study, um, including, uh, uh, you know, gathering whatever information and historic data we can on the lakes and and interpreting giving you our interpretation on that many of the same folks who are on here tonight will be available then to uh present to you and, and answer questions and then um develop that uh management plan uh once that uh through a series of public meetings and the online survey as as dale was talking about um and then once that that plan is once we have consensus on that plan, um, then it goes uh, on file uh, with the county. Um, so again, just to give you a little more uh, structure, I'm, I'm a more visual person myself, so uh, these slides help me. Um, this is kind of the overall structure of the uh, Lakes project. Um, we have two uh, umbrella reports, the State of the Lakes report, um, which uh, Dale and Ken showed you a little bit of. Um, that is that is a, a that is updated each year, um, which adding the new group of lakes that that join the process each year. And so again, that 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 study or that report um, summarizes all the lakes together. So um, you know you may have uh, high phosphorus concentrations, but who else has five phosphorus concentrations, and and how do you compare to them? Or um, you know. Uh, who's got hard water, soft water, things like that. So it's it's a variety of different uh, parameters that you can look at your lakes ranking relative to the others in the study. And then uh, an appendix to that state of the lakes report is the individual lake study summary reports, uh, which you'll receive at the end of the two years. Uh, the other umbrella report, as we've mentioned a couple of times, is the operational strategy for surface water management. Um, and then your subsequent lake management plan, and that's the document that we will develop together in the public meetings, um, that becomes uh, each of those lake management plans become an appendix to that surface water management plan. So um, that's kind of how uh, I, I picture the structure in my head. Hopefully that, that gives you a little bit of understanding. Again, there's a link down there to um, the county website where you can find everything, uh, including this meeting. Again, if you'd like to watch it again. Um, I've also had good luck just Googling Old County County Light Study if you forget um, the actual links um, to the website. Um, just a quick, just a quick show you. Here's here's the latest uh, couple of figures out of the latest state of the lakes. Um, this just came out, so we've we've got about uh, 40 lakes now uh, incorporated into this um, report. So um, you can see they're ranking uh, lakes in terms of the number of plant species they have in their lakes, uh, phosphorus concentrations, uh, water clarity, things like that. And then um, here's an example of one of the summary reports that would be an appendix to that. So this was the summary report for Ranch Lake. Uh, and again, just a variety of uh, maps and figures uh, summarizing data about your lakes. Um, here's here's the operational strategy and plan that we um, have mentioned a few times now. Um, kind of an interesting document. It, it also talks about the uh, county survey. Um, that occurred. And um, again, this was adopted unanimously by the county board in 2018, uh, which really led to this whole project. And then as an appendix to that operational strategy will be your individual lake management plans. And so the lake management plans uh, have um, contain all that summary data, uh, but paired that with a little more discussion on what the implications of those interpretations mean, what the implications of the various data means, and then combined with uh, goals and objectives uh, for your uh, district and 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 uh, uh, residents to um, use as a checklist or as a as a as a uh, to do list um, in managing your lake. 
So that's a, that's all I have. Again, here is the uh, contact information for the main project partners. Um, if at any time you will have more questions or a question about where the project is or something like that, give us a give one contact one of us um, and uh, feel free to reach out to. Uh, we all talk quite a bit together, so we can um, get you to the right person, regardless of who you start with. And um, so, if you're interested uh, in in joining us in the field on the boat one of the days or um, wanting to take the survey, what have you, um, look for that. Otherwise, um, you probably won't hear a whole lot from us until the uh, study is complete and we start scheduling the public meetings. So similarly, you'll get, uh, you'll be contacted uh, via postcard and, and newspaper um, about that process. So um, with that, I, just uh, I wanted to see if anyone has any questions, um, any comments that uh, you'd like, anything you'd like to, to be aware of um, here at the beginning of this project. Um, like you said, you know, we, you guys do have, uh, you guys have been up to some things. So I'm aware of um, your work with the milfoil and um, things like that. And so, um, but um, if, if at any time something comes up or, or you think you see something curious, I think it's a call, but if anyone has any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to speak up. Um, I, I'm gonna start. I'm, uh, yeah, this is Ken, Ken Delata, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and I just wanna emphasize that though, know, this is a good time to bring up any issues you have that you want, uh, not saying it's gonna get corrected or anything, but that's what the rest of this meeting is for is to hear from you people. And with that, I did receive an email, Brian, that, um, and I would appreciate anyone online commenting on this, but the uh, person contacted about the, uh, should be interesting. You see, there's a situation where the town of Townsend is encouraging kayakers to use Brookside Park off of County T. And this is kind of all in, you know, I don't think we mentioned this, but with uh, your Lake District and Townsend and stuff, we're doing them all together at the same time because you, your last plans were written together and it really makes sense being connected that it that they go together. So, but I guess keep that in mind. But so you guys, I think pretty much use everything out around there, but there are no bathroom facilities and people just go on the ground all the time. The pollution gets into the water. Same with the trash. Can this be taken into account? I can't believe uh, that they are letting this happen in this park. So, they say it needs facilities, but can anyone comment on that? Do they know anything about it or is it a problem? Is it an issue? Is it something that should be put in your plan? Any kind of this stuff can be put in your plan as things to look at. And... Okay. I'm, I'm Judy from up there and I, I really do not live close enough to have viewed any of the problems that she said. I do know that people do use those kayaks and bring them back and, it gets a lot of use, so I'm, I don't know if we can post something or what the answer would be. Thanks. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. It's just good to know if there is an issue. It could be as simple as education with signage or stuff like that. But I have a question. Sure. Yep. Go ahead. Um, this is Karen. I got a place on Reservoir Pond. Anyway, I wanted to know who and specifically do I call to volunteer my time for doing research? Do I call Brenda? Um, yes, I think Brenda would be your, your uh, best person to start with. Um, my staff here at Stevens Point does, does some of the sampling, but we mainly augment what what she's not able to complete, and then and then help her. So, um, yeah, she will be out doing um, the aquatic plant surveys, which you know she cruises around the lake in a, in a boat. Um, the shoreland habitat surveys. Um, if you're interested, you probably um, already have someone who does citizen monitoring, um, but you can get involved with that and help out with that if you want, which is just. Uh, uh, taking water samples once a month. Um, she's also the coordinator for that. So, uh, okay. yes, Br Brenda would be the best place to start. Um, and also, if... who do I talk to about getting a shoreline restoration evaluation? That would be myself, Ken Delata. Okay. Should I have my email when you emailed for the I do. Link? Um, yeah, because okay. I get 
we own part of the tube that connects Horn Lake and Reservoir Pond. And we got that peninsula that sticks out. Yep. And we're having a lot of issues. I think it's beginning to erode mm. from all the boat traffic. Sure. So um, I don't know. I can, I'll email Ken. Yes. Yep. We can come up, take a look at it, and give recommendations. Yeah. Because we got that big white pine that's kind of, that's another thing. If that big pine tree falls into the lake and blocks all the boat traffic, solves the problem. Is the, <laughs> is the DNR going to be responsible because it's a tree? landing into the waterway oh that'll be whoever the property owner it's on and they actually they actually prefer to leave them in the lake right but if it's but, obstructing navigation right but once it's I, in the lake isn't it the dnr no i i can probably a 95 percent guarantee they're not going to come and cut it out hmm. someone might complain and they'll say go ahead cut it out if you want you know, to open up navigation, but I don't know who would even come and do it, honestly, from the DNR. Well, how could anybody do it? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good question. There, there's ways of doing it, but it's yeah. not easy once it's in the water. And then the other question I got is over on Horn Lake, there's a lot of wake boats that are stirring up and tearing up the plant life in that lake and big mm -hmm. flotillas of plant debris are landing on people's property in Horn Lake. Yeah. And that's, that's a, causing a problem. That's a pretty hot topic right now. And I believe does anyone, uh, when, let me see, maybe I still have, it was, uh, that Townsend was going to actually have a meeting because they're looking at, uh, creating an ordinance for the, I think it was part of the seven towns, you know, the northern towns together, um, writing an ordinance, putting restrictions on them. And to everything I've heard so far, because this has been happening at the state level, um, I just seen yesterday on the news that uh, the Wapaka chain uh, has a big issue. Their town actually put a restriction on it, but they didn't pass it yet. But there was hundreds of people there, and there was only about four there for it. Uh, I mean four wake boats. The rest were all against it. Um, right. And everything I heard from the state is you cannot regulate a type of boat, but you can put regulations on them as far as the, the big thing they're looking at. The state came up with a draft rule that no one liked, but it was 300 feet set back from shorelines. And a lot of these lakes are saying that it, that ain't big enough. It needs to be a thousand feet or something like that. And basically what that would do is eliminate that they could on the smaller lakes that they couldn't even run them um, right. because they wouldn't meet the setback. And they also wanted in there, obviously a big issue is depth because they're saying up to 20 feet deep, they can be stirring up the bottom and stuff. So. Yeah. I it, think the, the, the deepest, what part of, I don't know, was it 12 feet? What's the deepest on Horn Lake? I thought it was like 12 feet or something, 12 or 15. Yeah. I'd have to look it up. Because yeah, yeah, you, met, it's all met, ripped up. Yeah, you know, you see all the good plant debris floating on top. Mm -hmm. We just met with um, Boulder Lake uh, last week, two weeks ago. Um, they're finishing up their process. We were having their planning meetings, but um, you know that if you're familiar with Boulder Lake, they have a maximum depth of 15 feet, and so that's been a big issue there as well. And um, and so yeah, I think they're developing an ordinance that, down there as well. So there's some there's okay. some precedent and there's some precedent for that developing for sure. <laughs> Right. That's happening on the pond, too. I'm on the pond. But um, <laughs> I know the town of Doty has passed the ordinance. I went to their meetings to find out more about the wake boats. But who is going to enforce this? That's the whole problem. That's and the they question. Do have, I mean, See, the, the northern towns you know, do have the right. Oh, go ahead. I mean, <laughs> we aren't going to go out there and tell them to take their boat in i i can't see that happening so I, i'm just wondering if there are any ideas on how we enforce any of these things you would actually have an easier time with the wake boats than you would with no wakes and stuff like that just because it's pretty uh pretty obvious when they're doing it but uh the yes. problem is there's a, a northern rec officer that is only there part-time and uh it's at you know a sheriff's deputy that 
if you right. call him and and he's not out on some other lake or something else, they can come over and enforce stuff. But they also say that you know if there's a car accident down in Styles, that gets priority over a complaint on a lake. You know, um, that's <laughs> right. your first priority is the you know safety stuff for the main sheriff's department duties. But but so there is that, and the wardens once there is an actual ordinance can start enforcing through with the rec officer but it's still it's still unsure if Doty was the first one to pass an ordinance they don't think it'll hold up in court so then you don't really have much you know um it's it's to be tested yet and that's why Townsend was trying to and I'm not saying Townsend was doing it themselves that's just where the meeting was but they wanted to get all the townships on the same page so at least they're all enforcing the same ordinance. You know, it's not every town has a little different or whatever. And so, but it's still being challenged in the state and everything else. So it's, it'll be interesting. It's definitely an issue in my opinion on our smaller lakes. Well, and, and hopefully as a part of this, this project, um, you know, we, so many lakes deal with the same, the same issues and you're just kind of uh, oftentimes left up to yourself to, to um, figure out how to write grants and solve the problem. So um, hopefully this project connects a lot of dots, um, connects a lot of people and builds a, you know, a momentum even uh, in the lake community that gets, that gets more attention. Um, again, you know, a big part of this was, was that, uh, I, what is it? Three, three of the 30 supervisors are up in uh, Lake country there. Um, most, most are, yeah, most are down in the Southern part of the County. So, um, you know, I think historically, um, and I, I think it's pretty well known, I, you know, as, a, as a, being from Portage County, I can tell you, I associate Oconto County with uh, lakes <laughs> and, and outdoor recreation. And so I think that is recognized as a key part of the economy. And, um, and they're trying to figure out how to best um, uh, start um, uh, taking care of that uh, in the best ways. So I, I think I think the message is definitely getting out there that that the uh, some of these uh, watercraft um, conflicts are are some of the biggest um, some of the biggest problems. Another question: If I could take this in a different direction, um, my family's been on the reservoir pond for about sixty years. We're up on the upper part of the reservoir pond where the McCaslin goes into it. Over my lifetime, of about 60 years, I've seen the silt accumulation get deeper and deeper mm -hmm. um, to the point where we can't even use our lift to get our pontoon boat on and off. I'd love to really be a part of the study in the, I can show historical areas where the water level has been kept much higher than it is today. But the silt accumulation is getting deeper and deeper, no pun intended, each year. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if that's something okay. part of this study or not. It it's not directly part of the study that you know that I'd be beyond the, the scope of of you know those 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 uh, uh, chapters, if you will, that that are in the. Uh, in the regulation, but um, it definitely can be addressed in the in the plan. You know, uh, in terms of um, uh, outlining a, a path forward to uh, assess that and and deal with that. Um, but no, beyond beyond the scope of this specific study, fortunately, um, that's more of a yeah. That's going to be more of a, a an issue with impoundments, um, and um, we've only had a handful of those, I guess, in this project so far. That's good to know. And like the previous yeah. question, and I'd like to be a part of the study as well. Uh, I'll call Brenda to Great. get involved uh, mm -hmm. because I've been on the lake my entire life. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. So you're the one that I'm assuming put in a question, Will Silt, the accumulation and reservoir? Yes, I am. Okay, yeah, make that, sure yeah. we answered it. Thank you. Hey, good evening, uh, Ken, Dale, Ryan, everybody. My name is Jim O'Neill. I've got a cottage. Our cottage is on Littlehorn Lake, but um, I'm also involved with our Lake District. And so I think, Ryan, you answered the question um, 
because again, we've, we've been very fortunate with a lot of volunteers, a lot of lake monitoring, dealing with the Eurasian milfoil, et cetera. So we don't, you don't need any of that information from us. You guys have all of that and you're going to use all of that then. Um, yeah. So the, the, you know, when it, when it, when it comes to invasive species and, and, um, uh, you know, the, the, I guess the overall plant management, um, you know, there'll be a standard survey done, you know, a, a, a complete um, plant survey. I know the consultants often do a, a, a somewhat abbreviated version for, for their, you know, pre and post control surveys. Um, so this will be a, a comprehensive uh, sort of survey. And then it will um, talk about, uh, yes, what, what the, how the lake has been dealing with the EWM and, and some things like that. Um, but then it will refer to, um, you know, the the lake the plan would then make reference to whatever active um, plant management plan you have going with your consultants. So so that 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 permitting process of of uh, you know having a plan about what you're going to treat and what you're going to do and and getting that approved and the, you know that that continues. This won't this won't negate that process. Um, it'll just kind of create some structure around that, I guess. Okay. So. Ryan, this is Karen yes. again. So mm -hmm. you basically you want to encourage all of us that are participating today and anybody we know to go online and fill out those surveys. Yes, that would be good. And that survey is going to, you know, that survey will be open for the duration of, of this project, um, for of your project. So mm -hmm. it'll be open for, you know, uh, through uh, when we do planning in, in 2026. Um, but yes, you know, if, if, the uh, the district could get that link out there. Um, it it really informs the uh, the the results of that survey actually get uh, become appended to the lake management plan and help to justify and inform the goals and actions in that plan. So um, uh, so it's really good way to to quantify the perspectives and um, and uh, make sure we're 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 hearing from everybody, not just the the usual suspects, if you will. So but yes, that'd be great. Ryan, Jim, again, yeah, and mm -hmm. Karen, thank you, thank you for that. Because we'll make sure, from a Lake District standpoint, we'll put that link out. Um, we can do that in the next week or so if if it's if it's going to be active for for our lakes. Yeah. We can do that, and then Ryan, is there anything else that you want us to do from a Lake District standpoint to to publicize this or or you know to kind of get the word out? Uh, like Karen said, it's nice to see. What are we at? Thirty five participants. So. Mm -hmm. if, it's nice to see that we've got a, a hopefully a good representation of of people who are interested in in you know protecting our lakes. So what else do you yeah, want to do? Absolutely. Um, you know, um, if if people are interested again in, in coming out on the boat or something or getting involved in in water quality sampling, that's something they can do. Otherwise, um, just yeah. Hopefully, just being aware that um, that there's people out there working on your lake and 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 hopefully going to come up with. Um, some ideas about about some of your issues and um, and who to contact if you have something to contribute. So if you if you think of something, if if you see something that you think might be relevant or someone hasn't uh, thought of, um, I guess that that's that's about it. But okay, but just mm -hmm. Jim, Mrs. K this is Kendall Otto. One thing I would recommend you guys do a newsletter for your Lake District and stuff. Yes, that sheet that Dale showed you on our mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. Download it and add that to it and send it out to everyone. I mean, you can see when it was last updated and that way they're getting the information right in front of them, what's coming up next and what's been done and so on. It'd be a nice addition, in my mind, to the newsletter. Yeah, I like that timeline, Ken, because I mean, that that shows, did I read that right? I think you guys start with us June of 24 and then the completion with the actual, I guess, is it the publication of the of the management plan was, was uh, what, fall of 27? Was that it? Yeah, probably that. Well, yep. um, yeah. Well, let's see. There it is. Yep. Twenty twenty-five. So about this time in in twenty um, in twenty twenty-six. Okay, twenty twenty-six. Okay. Yes. And this this slide that I'm looking at now, like you said, I can just go to the the Ocano link there, and I can just download this slide so that we can we can put that out. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, that's what we'll do then. Yep. Yeah, this whole and this whole presentation for that matter, if you like. So yeah, absolutely. you're right. No, no, that's that's a good mm -hmm. idea. We'll put that whole link out there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Good. And yeah, I said I guess sorry, go ahead. This is Karen again. Um, since I'm heavily 
into research and I've got a background that is uh, would be of use to you. Let's put it that way. Is there if there's a lot of interest in a lot of the residents wanting to participate in research, would it be behoove? Like, should we get like a group together? Like um, an email list going or something like that? Or does everybody call Brenda? <laughs> Do you that's know what question. I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good question. Cool to have like a group where we could all kind of like meet well, or again, talk amongst yeah, and again, ourselves. Yeah, you guys, you guys are in a little different than so many of the lakes we work with. Uh, so many lakes we don't even have an association, so it, it really is kind of every man for himself. Um, but if you guys have that organization, I think that would be very helpful, uh, particularly so Brenda doesn't field 30 different calls. Yeah, um, that would be excellent. And she could probably give you some more um specifics on 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 dates and times that you could then pass along i don't know how many people she can fit on the boat at is, once you know but. <laughs> is there somebody listening in that's on our lake association yeah karen this is jim o'neill yeah we're actually and i'm not being critical of you we're a lake district and that's okay but just it's oh, a, sorry. no no it's just a legal formality so yeah you know karen you know when i, when I heard first heard you speak tonight i'm like you got to come to our meetings <laughs> <laughs> so, well, and I probably can. My dad used to, Bob Grady. Okay. Yes. Need to come to the meetings, Karen. Yeah. So <laughs> he's idiot. gone now. Well, he's gone now. But um, I've got a background in biology. I've done water quality. I've done wastewater. I've so I've got a. I'm a. Okay. Um, I've Good. got a background. Let's just put it that way, and an interest in research and science. Sure, okay. Karen. If you, if you don't mind, and again, I I don't want to. Put this out for the whole group. I, I don't mean it that way. I can give you my cell phone right now if you if you want to text me or call me. Uh, I'm the chair of our Lake District, but I mean, there's other folks on here. Judy Fellows, I see uh, John Zeller. I mean, uh, Karen, uh, Carol Harder. There's a whole bunch of people who are very very active with our Lake District. So I don't hold the monopoly on 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 any kind of knowledge at all. I just happen to be the chair of our Lake District. So. Um, I can give you my cell phone if you want to touch base with me sometime afterwards. And um, again, not that I have any answers, but I'm I'm willing to try to get you on board to help out. Well, yeah, or if I could spearhead something or get something, some kind of movement going. That'd be great. Yeah. With yeah. your approval, of course. What's your phone number? It's 920-655-3569. Okay. Three five, six, three, five, six, nine. Yeah. Jim O'Neill. Yeah, I got that part. Okay. Thank you. You bet, Karen. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Um, that's just, yeah. A little example of where these meetings can, can, can pay off sometimes just making some connections. Um, we used to do the, the meetings in person um, and then COVID hit, obviously, and we went to zoom um, and we, we haven't gone back because our participation is so much greater with the online uh, platform, um, just in terms of, you know, we don't we don't get the quite the the interpersonal discussion, but um, the the numbers of people we reach when they can just uh, tune in online is is um, considerably more so. Um, you know, I'm guessing your lake your your lake meetings are probably in person, so maybe that's. <laughs> yeah, we we definitely meet in person, but yeah. like, you know, a small a small turnout, but but yeah. we're, we're getting more and more people. So we get Karen, Karen on board, and she's going to rally the troops. So that'd be nice. Jim, can you tell me there was reference to you guys having a plan before? Is that is that more specifically for uh, uh, raising milfoil management? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Ryan. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. We're we're okay. we're all about Eurasian milfoil, and so nope, I understand. Yeah, and that's what that I was all. That's all I could find, and I just wanted to be sure that that was that was what I was working with. Yep. Okay. okay. And I know, like, like I know, Ryan Judy's Judy Fellows is on this call or this meeting here too, and and like I said, I am not the keeper of the knowledge, so sure. Judy, sound off if there's other historical documents or studies. That that we that you may know of, or that we can you know help Brian get his hands on. Yeah, if you think of anything, um, you know the 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 state database, at least for water quality and and aquatic plant surveys and stuff like that, is is pretty good. Not been able to find most things, but um, every once in a while something turns up. So if you, I've had people mail me, you know, 
notes on napkins from water level measurements they made 30 years ago and things like that. So. Good. A anything else from anybody? Any questions, comments? Uh, we are meeting with um, uh, Townsend and McCasenbrook, um, not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, they will get a um, uh, an almost identical sort of uh, presentation, introducing them to the project as well. And so, um, uh, you know, whatever whatever contacts or however you guys uh, work together, um, uh, just know that they're also uh, up up to speed on this process too. Yeah, I appreciate that, Ryan. Again, Jim O'Neill, yeah. because you're right. We do work hand in hand with Townsend Lake. Sure. Here. Again, yeah. good, good people. I, I want to just, if I may, just follow up with with the wake boats and and um, because I just I attended the town of Townsend. Uh, they had a um, informational meeting uh, this last Saturday. So, and again, I'm I'm a vacationer. I'm not a voting resident. So I would just say go to the town of Townsend. Uh, website. They have a proposed ordinance for, um, again, as I think Ken, you had said, we no one can, you know, make a boat illegal or, or on, you know, that it can't enter a lake, but that what they can do is, is uh, uh, restrict equipment. And so this is called, I think it's called a, a uh, wake boat enhancement. I, I forget something with the equipment kind of thing where they're going to prohibit it. Yeah. And they've got a proposed ordinance in talking to them, it looks like the timeline maybe like maybe midsummer because they have to obviously draft it, have it you know public hearings, voting, and then I think the DNR has to review and approve it. And so I think their tentative timeline was like July, uh, you know, this July kind of thing. But I would encourage um, everybody to just go to the town of Townsend website to take a look at that uh, proposed ordinance. Jim, what's a uh... Own of Townsend just doing it, or were they the, the group of them up there doing it? Do you know? Um, I see John Zeller's on here. John, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it was this was just the town of Townsend. Um, certainly the town of Doty was brought up, but as far as I know, there weren't other like uh municipalities present. This was this was purely uh the town of Townsend and their um their board presenting this proposed ordinance. Uh, Jim, I, I'll, I'll change that just slightly the town of townsend is part of the seven towns um association up here and it all started i think earlier late last fall early this winter or something like that that the dnr um did a presentation at the seven towns meeting that's where Doty's um ordinance came from um, my understanding is Riverview has uh, adopted another form of an ordinance, which is part of that seven towns. Um, Townsend is looking at it as well as Lakewood and the other seven towns. They are not exactly identical, but they are um, very similar in nature. Um, but once the final ordinance is um, put together, then you know, it has to be passed by the town board, then it has to go to the DNR for review, comment and approval, come back to the board uh, of the town and be approved. So there is quite a bit of process left to, to go through. And you're correct, it was an informational meeting um, on Saturday for just Townsend. Very good, thanks. I could try and stay up on that because like you say, it's a heated, Heat a topic now. Anyone else? Um, I guess yes, I'd just I'll like just... to say. Say through the whole thing. Uh, oh, go ahead, Kevin. There is a there is a website for the uh, if you search Google it or Bing it. Um, Inland Lakes Protection and Rehabilitation District Number One. Uh, you'll you'll get a site there, and there's a lot of the things that the district is doing for the lakes uh, published there. Oh, 
guess, I guess I just want to uh, state again that throughout this whole process, if you got any questions, I mean, feel free to call me at any time, email, um, Ryan, what questions, whatever. I mean, that's what we're here for. So um, you don't have to wait two years to get to ask your next question. So, <laughs> yep. And um, yeah, uh, you know, you guys are towards the end of the process. So there are loads of lakes on the on the website uh, that have been through this. So if you're curious uh, about, you know, what other lakes have come up with or what some of their other issues are, um, or maybe it's just a, a lake you're interested in, um, definitely uh, spend some time checking out all those other documents as well. I got a random question. What is the yeah. most common issue like a negative issue or impact that you've been seeing on the the lakes in general well pretty pretty easily um you're you're right in line with it <laughs> um two biggest issues by far are um um watercraft operation whether that be uh uh you know wake hours or uh wake boats um and then uh, number one would be Eurasian water milfoil. So um, you guys are you guys are right in it. So same old, same old. Same old, same old. Absolutely. You yeah. know, there's there's a few handful of things uh, you know um, that people are dealing with, but that is oh you know by far and away the two biggest. And you know we're, we're those are the two biggest statewide that that we're struggling with. Um, you know, um, there's only two lakes in the in the state that have ever successfully eradicated Eurasian water milfoil, and um, and no one's really sure what to do about the uh, how to change behavior around uh, uh, boating on your vacation. Um, so, um, you know, those are those are those are things we could all use some some help and ideas with. Amen, Ryan. Uh, yeah. Jen Jim O'Neill, if I may, just selfishly, one last plug for our Lake District meeting. We have quarterly meetings. Our next meeting is June 1st, 9 o'clock a.m. at the Town of Townsend Town Hall. And um, this was a great, great meeting. It's just, it's always good to get us, I say, get us, lake owners, voters, get us all together so that we can talk. And, and, um, and, and Karen, I'll look forward to talking to you soon and we can kind of put some ideas together. So thanks, everybody. What was the June date for the next Lake District meeting? June? June 1st. And, yeah, and Karen, Kevin put in the chat uh, uh, the link to our, our website, and that will have all of the, the commissioners' names, phone numbers, email address, because I don't want to, like I said, I'm, I'm just a volunteer. I'm no expert, and uh, many hands lighten the workload. So we'd, we would certainly welcome you, no doubt about it. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Jim and Karen, uh, everyone else. And Ken, good to, good to see you. Yeah, so if there's no more questions, I'd just like to thank everyone for taking your time out to come and see what it's all about. And thank you. All That's right. a good information. All right. Okay. Well, everyone have a good evening. And again, feel free to call at any time. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank Enjoy. you. Bye-bye.